Welcome back to my channel, Ford with John. Today we're going to be uh, servicing a uh, John Deere lawnmower. Uh, it was dropped off a couple days ago. It's got a Briggs and Stratton engine with an external oil filter. So I picked up the parts for it already. Uh, it's been approximately four years, three years. Uh, nothing has been done to this. Oil has never been changed. At least it's got no oil filter, so it would have gotten rid of a lot of the stuff. Anyway, uh, any parts I use, I'll put in the description. I'll put a link in the description. And also, if you're watching any of my other channels, you're going to notice if I got a part one, part two, I always put the part two or part three, whatever, and also in the description. So you don't have to go in my channel and search. So this particular lawnmower has a battery. It's dead. Um, he put it away. I don't believe he's ever cleaned it uh, before I get onto it because i got to check the belts and everything. Uh, I'm going to just pressure wash underneath so I can get a good look at everything. Like I said, it hasn't been touched for a while. So we get on just cleaning all the old grass out. This should be done quite often, especially before you put it away. If not, before you know it, the deck rots out on you. So anyway, future reference, anybody out there, if you got a lawnmower, your best bet is to clean the old grass, especially before you put it away for the winter. Okay, I don't want to lie this on the side on the asphalt. If I do, it's going to end up scratching the paint on it, and I don't want to do that. As you notice, I'm using plastic, so I'm not scratching the paint. Yeah, it's composted under here. You can see where it's starting to rust here. Okay, I'm just going to start the pressure washer up. Okay, now we got it cleaned. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the oil just to make sure there's enough oil in it uh, before I start it. I can let it run for about, I'm going to probably let it run 10 minutes. Enough to dry it out, heat it up so I can change the oil. Anyway, I'll get on that. Oil's full. Not much gas, but there's enough in there. Okay, so we'll start it. This particular, like I mentioned earlier, I think I mentioned earlier, battery's dead. What well, we'll may address that. <laughs> now it's all warmed up. I'm going to check the uh, air cleaner. And actually, it's in really good shape. Move the foam back a bit. Yeah, I can see right through this whole thing. I'm going to drain and check the uh, the float bowl. Just to get rid of the old stuff that's in there. And see if the needle's stuck on it. There's not much fuel in here anyway, so yeah, it's not looking too healthy. Yeah. 
yeah, there's not much fuel in here, but like I say, I'll show you <clears throat> show you after. It's not looking good at all. So we let it drain out. I'll put some fresh gas in it after with uh, a bit of sea foam. Oh yeah, that's pretty much all the gas I was in it. That's empty. Yeah, there's water in the tank too. He's using ethanol fuel. I'll put the air cleaner back on. I don't need to take this off. I don't know if you can get a good look at that. And you can see water in the bottom of this. So yeah, old fuel, and he was using just regular, uh, regular fuel with ethanol in it. I usually, on all small engines, I use uh, around here Shell 91 has no ethanol. Okay, I poured that old gas in a container, which I'll uh, wait till I get enough of it, and I'll take it off and bring it into uh, recycle. Okay, yeah, even the gas smells bad. Okay, so now we get the oil changed. On this one here, you basically have to drain the oil from the dipstick. You can either suck it out. I found the easiest way to drain these. Instead of going down and sucking it out, I just flip them up on end. I'll show you. It's fairly easy. Take the dipstick out. And if you check the manual, it tells you... The, on this particular uh, engine, uh, John Deere, it says uh, tip it on its side and uh, drain the oil. Get it up on its side. Get this over where the dipstick is. Don't let it fold. Let it drain for a bit. Like I say, right now I got no fuel in the, the system, so that's not an issue at all. Yeah, while that's draining, I can check the blade. I think he's got four years use on this. And I noticed it a little off balance when it was running. It was a little rough, so I'm gonna take the blade off, sharpen it, balance it, and put it back on. And the belt on here. Actually, the belt's in really good shape. All the oils out of it. I'm gonna put the uh, stop in it so I get no uh, dirt or anything inside the um, the engine. Down. thing I'm going to do on this is sharpen the blade. You can tell it's hasn't been sharpened and 
I think it's been four years. It's a little beat up. And as I'm sharpening it, I'll clean the blade up just to get an excess uh, grass off it. Uh, after it's all cleaned up, then I can check the balance of it. Before I go any further, before I touch the blade, I always like pulling the spark plug off, the spark plug cap off. Okay, it's off. But I doubt it would stir because that handle has to be pushed down, but be on the safe side, I'd say take it off. Yeah, I'll take that excess grass off here so when I balance it, I'm good. I'll just clean that off quickly. Okay, grass is off. I just want to see where it sits before I even start. Yeah. As you can see, I mentioned earlier that the mower was running a little off balance. You can tell when I was starting it just letting it idle and was running off balance because one side of the blade's heavier than the other yeah here I can get a better angle okay stay away from it because the sparks are flying this way oh okay. that's why I look the sparks are going that way It seems to be out quite a bit for one more that's not that old. Okay, I'll put a link in the description for one of these tools to balance your blade. You can do it two ways, uh, and I did it both ways for you. You can either use this tool, or if you can, you got a round, nice round hole. You can just put something in a vise and put it on and just chuck it this way, same thing. And the way you balance these blades is as you're sharpening it, you're sharpening, uh, and if you got one heavy side, let's say it's weighted here, as you on the surface where you're sharpening, you just take more off this side until the weight's even on both sides, as you sharpen both sides. And when you're doing it, don't overheat. Don't go too hard or too much on one side because you would lose the temper on the blade and it would get dull really quick. Anyway, I'll get this back on. Uh, they're supposed to put these on with a uh, torque wrench. I'm just gonna snug it up. I gotta find the torque for this particular engine, blade, and make sure you put it on the right way. A lot of times it's easy. If you forget, take a picture before you do it or check the marks as you can see where it came off. You can see where the nut went on. So this would have gone this way because that's the mark over here. Yeah, I'll just snug it down for now and I'll have to... Uh, find out what the torque spec is on this. Okay, I uh, searched for the uh, torque spec, found it, and I torqued it on. Uh, I'm not gonna mention what the torque spec is. Simple fact is every lawnmower is gonna be different. And there's a liability on that. If somebody, if I give a torque spec and somebody says, well, I torqued it and the blade fell off, because these blades, if they're spinning really fast, they come flying off, they can't hurt you, so. Anyway, check the manufacturer what the torque spec is, and definitely torque the blade on. Okay, I'm gonna pull the spark plug out. Give it the right one. 
I'm going to change the spark plug. And actually, you look at it, the spark plug was loose. I didn't use a wrench to undo it. I can do it undo it by hand. Didn't damage the threads. Okay. So we'll go get the new spark plug. I just got to gap it. Gap on this particular plug. I make sure I got the right one. Ah, uh, 0 0.020. Check the volume. Yeah. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, service the gears on the rears. It's a uh, rear wheel drive. We can pull the handle down. So I got to. Grease the uh, bearings in the uh, wheels, and also uh, lube up the gears in the rear. So to do that, I'm just going to take a couple of blocks, put it underneath the lawnmower, just to lift the rear wheels off the ground. washer and a nut on this one to the side I took the cap off earlier and make sure all the gears are clean I did this earlier just to clean it up so I wouldn't bore you with it but take all the grass out of here if you have any all the dirt clean it up clean the gears up check them make sure everything is good and what I like using on this on the gears is a uh, graphite. I'll put the link in the description for it. Just graphite on the gears. A lot of times from factory they don't put anything. You can't really use grease. If you use grease what happens is it's not really sealed and dirt and grass gets in and get into the grease and then it will start chewing the gears right out in no time at all. So graphite is a dry grease after, after it dries up and it still lubes it. Which I suppose you can get away with not even greasing them, but to be on the safe side, let's make them last longer. I prefer using a bit of graphite. Graphite is black. Huh? Graphite is black. Yeah, if you leave that sit for a bit, it's just going to dry up. And it's like, say, it's a, uh, a dry lubricant. You don't have to worry about grease. Or not grease, but you don't have to worry about uh, dirt or anything sticking to it. Okay, and then I'm just going to get some uh, lube for the uh, wheel bearings. PL100, I'm going to... Just put that inside on the bearings. They're kind of sealed, but not really. So. Okay, now it's lubed up. Everything's cleaned out. The bearings are lubed up.
put it back on. The nuts are locking nuts, so they lock from the center. And I don't like using an impact to tighten them up. I'll just use Before I leave this section, to adjust the height of the tires up and down, I'm just going to loop that up. I got a bit of grass in here, so I'm just going to clean that out. cap back on I'll go through and do that to the other wheel same thing and I'll take the two front ones off and I'll just put a bit of PL 1000 on the wheel bearings make sure everything's good and put it back together this cast missing is probably in his yard somewhere and in total it took uh, I had it up to 20 I'm down to four Uh, for uh, 16, yeah, 16 ounces. If you look at it, it took uh, 500 milliliters. Okay, we're gonna try it outside. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, it helps me out a lot, and hit the bell. Thanks for watching my channel. Bye for now. Welcome to my channel, Ferg with John. Today we're going to be servicing a John Deere lawnmower. Can you talk? Okay. Yeah. Okay, when I first tried to pull this, it was stuck. Uh, it was, I'm guessing, hydro locked. Because uh, after it freed up, there's fuel coming out of the uh, exhaust, raw fuel. So, before I go any further, I'm going to talk to the guy to see how he started this. He just pulled it out of his garage. It was outside when I uh, picked it up. And my guess is he may store this up on end. Or on its side, I don't know, maybe he tied it up like this or just to make room. I don't know how he stored this, so I don't know how much work it's going to be. I'm going to have to do, take the plug out, turn it over a bunch of times, dry it out. Now uh, the emission system is going to be messed up because i got to talk to him first to see how he stored it. And I'll go from there. I took a quick look at it. There's a lot of grass underneath it. Uh, there was a uh, fuel coming out of the exhaust. So it's either a carburetor seat may have to be uh, cleaned up. I'm going to probably pull the carburetor off and clean it up. If not, I'll rebuild the carburetor. I'll see how bad it is when I get into it. Uh, right now what I have to do, everything's on, it's a little loose, so tighten a few things up. 